Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. In today's episode we are going to try and do the Incognito Princesses story. Even though I've said that at the start of every single video for god knows how long. And it hasn't actually happened yet. And for some reason my volume is about five times higher than it should be. Wow that was really loud. There we go. Uh, yeah, so we need to find Pertinence. Pertinence is in Albion. And I'm pretty sure, after getting some comments and things, people telling me where it should be, that my prediction that it was going to be next to Warbly Jackson Mare was pretty close. It's going to be up here somewhere. So it's just a case of us getting there, trying to find it, and then hopefully uh, we have two tickets to get into Pertinence, I believe. I remember looking it up in a previous episode. Hopefully within those two we can advance the storyline further and we can find out what the incognito princess actually wants us to do. Oh great, a marauder. There we go. That, uh, that was a little harder than I expected for some reason. Uh, let's just explore the captain's cabin for an unusual item. Silence skew gossip. Sometimes we get something else. Some free stuff down here. The nostalgic crockery, wonderful. Uh, okay, let's stop off at New Winchester first. Otherwise, I'm gonna run out of fuel or something or run out of supplies. That's just upsetting. Last thing we need to do is actually starve to death out here. That'd be kind of bad. As you can probably tell, I'm, I sound a bit strange just because I, I think I'm still getting sick. Or am sick. It's just not very bad. It's kind of in my nose, which, uh... It's crazy, considering uh, I don't do much. I don't know how I get sick so much. <laughs> it's, I keep going outside, that's the problem. I go outside and I get sick. I should just lock myself in this room. And record YouTube videos. That's what I should do. It's easier that way. Until I lose my voice. If I lose my voice, then I'm in trouble. But uh, as long as I, as long as I speak softly, we should be okay. It's when I get overexcited. <laughs> That's when the trouble starts kicking in. And we're coming up to New Winchester now. Bancroft's Forum. Let's pick up some supplies, and then I guess I'll cut to me getting into Albion. I think you've seen me do the trip to Port Prosper a million times now. I'll quickly have a look to see if there's any prospects. I could try to do some smuggling, but it's, I haven't really got that many hidden compartments and quite a lot of stuff. Okay. Crockery for Port Avon. Five crates of crockery. I don't think we actually have five crates, do we? No, we have three. And literature for polymer and planties. That's five bits of literature. I'm pretty sure I sold all my literature. And now all I actually need is some of this. Ooh. I see, never mind. I just remember about the repentant devil. I could. I could do the repentant devil. Because all we needed for that was some tea and some cloister honey? No, I'm, go I'm going to do the repentant devil. And up there, the incognito princess. Because I wanted to do that for a long, 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 long time. Okay, I will see you in Albion. Okay, here we are in Albion. So now, all we have to do is uh, is find... Goodness, can I get through here? I don't think I can get through here. No, I can't get through there. Hmm. Around we go. I'm really hoping it's quite an easy thing to find, otherwise this could be most of the episode me just wandering around trying to find. I've definitely been there in the past, but I'm pretty sure that was, well, obviously it was before they changed the map, so that was quite a while ago. And they've changed a lot of maps since I last did Albion. God, it seems like such a long time ago. How long have I been mate playing this game for now? What have you, it's over a year, surely. Man, I've achieved nothing. I've been playing this game for over a year for at least an hour a week, and I've still achieved absolutely nothing. Brilliant. <laughs> 
I love it. Uh, it's a testament to how much stuff there actually is in this game, I suppose. That and my ability to have goals and just completely ignore them. Oh no, it's those bloody brave people. Reliquists? Like that. Ah, bolt and tankery, leave me alone. No, 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 no. Okay, so we've got the Balkan Tankery. <laughs> this Balkan was a king of his kind, an isopod with the dimensions of an elephant, sheathed in layer upon layer of semi-calcified armor plates, all wrapped around the temperament of an embittered badger. Now it's a ruin of muscle and shell. Uh, do we want to do that? Nah, let's just gain sovereigns. Yeah, well, somehow we've managed. Oh, it's just a standard marauder. I thought it was one of the road courses, but no, apparently not. It's just an Albion marauder. One of these guys is they have machine guns. See? They're also apparently a lot more resilient. Oh. Ow. I'm so glad I clicked the right gun then. That would have hurt. An Albion Marauder, mangled. The Marauders are those who defy or have been excluded from Albion's authority. Leaderless raiders, homeless exiles, pirates, dissidents, and criminals. Let's rip them there. Let's, let's get some unusual cargo, actually. An aromatic casket. Oh, two supplies. Wonderful. Okay, well, something grave over here. What could this be? For some reason, uh, the new YouTube thing just came into my head, and it blew my mind. And uh, I, you get an email from YouTube if you make YouTube videos. They email you periodically and they ask you to do things. Uh, let's rest of my cover. Yeah. Uh, and it was about whether your channel is considered to be kid-friendly. It's apparently some United States law. As a man who lives in the United Kingdom, I don't know if that affects me or not, but I figured I'd do it anyway, just in case. And uh, it was, is your channel? aimed at children. And I was like, no, it's not aimed at children. I mean, if children want to watch the videos, I'm not gonna stop them, but it's not specifically kid-friendly content. I've been known to swear and things, be it accidentally, or on purpose if I'm streaming, because streaming is uh, a different kettle of fish. And I was like, do I, I, so I just put no, it's not aimed at children. But I don't know if that affects the algorithms in any way, shape or form. Like, is that going to stop a certain type of person from finding my videos now, or...? I don't know. YouTube are very, uh... Well, they probably they might have told us, and it's just hidden away somewhere, and I haven't found it. Admittedly, I didn't look very hard. I just kind of put... Is it aimed at children? No. Is it mature content? No. At least not on purpose. Anyway, I don't... Mate... Oh, it's curator. God, that thing hit hard. Curator defeated. Let's uh, take a trophy. We got an uncanny specimen. That is one of those eggs, but I've never managed to get a hatch. A curator egg. One of your crew dons their thermal sky suit and steps out into the cold. After a few minutes, they return, clutching an object that looks uncomfortably like a large wasp's nest. Reckon it's a curator's egg, they say, carefully handing it to you. It looks delicate, but it has a heft to it, as if something dense is nestled beneath all the papery outer layers. Uh, take the egg on board. Someone in a busy port is sure to want to buy it. One of your people swaddles the egg in a grease-stained blanket and wedges it into your hold. Sitting among crates and barrels, it looks more fragile than it did before. Eggs can be sold at St. Dominic's Station in London, Wolvesley Station in New Winchester, and King's Idol in Pan. I'm pretty sure we can also have it hatch. Oh, Christ. Oh, 
has a curator. Another one. Oi, 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 oi. fight than I remember. Admittedly, they have a lot... They're easier to hit with the missiles than, like, the guests. But they don't move as much. I don't think... Let's search for treasures. The curator's rings have curled in death, swaddling its body. The lump suggests concealed items. Uh, we lift them easily. They are thin, translucent, and dull beneath them. The creature's torso is marred with their brand. It is a sigil, partially obliterated by a wound from one of your weapons. Even damaged and incomplete. It aches to look upon. Here's a curator got a sigil on it. Oh, we've got a condemned experiment. Ugh, a maggot squirms free while you're cutting open the net. Beneath the curator's motley collection is an unhealing wound. Blood and effluvia have encrusted its belongings. You need to wipe them down before they can be identified. There is a cast metal sort... Letter O. There is a sharpened quill from no bird you've encountered. A pot of dust, which liquefies under pressure. Your engineer's hands will be stained for weeks. Poor fella. There's the well of the wolf. That's not what we're looking for. Yeah, okay, it's gotta be up here somewhere, right? This looks promising. It's some form of Infrastructure, that was the word I was after. I swear my brain's getting slower. Very annoying. Okay, what is it up here? Is that another curator's egg? Yips Revel. Pretty sure we can only carry one at a time, so. Unless we want to make an oversized omelet, it's probably not a good idea. I just hope that thing doesn't hatch and kill some people. I mean, I, I've never had it happen. They, they always break before I get there. I'm pretty sure it's just random chance. When it comes to random chance, my, my luck is never that good. <laughs> this place looks a little gloomy for Pertinence. Pertinence is supposed to be like, you know, the... Happy heavens and all that sort of stuff. But down here, there's like a big chunk of map here. This... Wait, oh, I know what I can do. That's a damn bat. I always forget I have these things. Oh, it's an owl. Oh. Oh, it's not around, it's not around here at all. Okay. Uh, it must be the other side, then. That will involve us going across Warbly Juxtamere's Sea, though, and we all know how well that goes every time I try and do that. Normally involves the big eye thing coming out from the ground, scaring the absolute crap out of me. Oh, bloody ball cantankery. Get lost. Okay, he actually got... Christ! I was going to say, oh, he actually got lost. Uh, no, he didn't. Oh, what's this? Prize otherworldly artifacts from between its plates. That sounds good. Vulcan Tankery are aggressive and once roused will bash themselves against a foe until either it or they are dead. During the battle, it's not unusual for fragments or belongings of their victims to become wedged in the bull's carapace. The thing you pull free from this one is ancient and inexplicable. Perhaps a use will present itself. I'll be a marauder. Wait, is this just the... A dance of death in the combat today? There we go. Uh, let's repair our hull this time, so we took a beating from one of the other, from the curators. Stripping the Marauder is slow work, its parts are ancient and much repaired. Finding suitable fits for your own engine is a process of trial and error. Ultimately though, some of it is repurposed and the rest left for scrap. Absolutely wonderful. Now the owl again. 
Ooh. At night, your sleep is peppered with uncomfortable dreams. You dream of a storm whose lightning scratches words across the sky, and whose thunder is a cacophony of voices belonging to people you have known. Its winds pluck pitifully at your clothes. You are wearing black, somber, funeral black. You wake. Seat company, conversation, tea, perhaps a biscuit. Those fundamental human things to help us forget numerous. Numinous moments like this. Partial success, oh god. On your way to the galley, you round up as many crew and officers as you can and lead them on a midnight raid of the pantry. Brandy is drunk. Murgatroyd fungal crackers are devoured in bulk. Let's quickly stop off at Warby Juxta there so we can buy some supplies. One less supply now because of that. Wonderful. It's got to be over here somewhere then. Go away, bloody giant scorn fluke. I spy my little high school beginning with M. I assumed it was a scorn fluke. Is it actually something else? It is a mega scorn fluke. That does, does that begin with M? I don't know. That, prob that probably might. It sounded better in my head, and then I said it, and I was like, no, that's not very funny. Oh, well. Fine. Let's knock here. Another marauder. Go away. Go. Uh, da 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 da. Shots. Bomb ammunition. Uh, ammunition. Took my like guns. Uh. Right, we're stopped again. Let's go. Let's get some arrows. Fling crates of ammunition at them. If anyone did hit our uh, our train. Be a pretty big bang. I mean, nine times out of ten, we're full of ammunition. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use the uh, owl a lot more. It's been a while since I've actually had to try and find something other than the uh, obvious when I was looking for the fifth signal box. That was a pain. I managed to find that one in the end. Run. But I've never been this side of the world. Well, apparently I've been to Rabbit's Run once. Can I go over this? Go. Around we go. Oh, it's. Ooh, that's good. I don't like it. <laughs> Neither does my crew, because it makes my terror go up by the nose. I'm kind of concerned that we haven't found ordnance. Of course, it's possible it's like down here or right down here. Or right here. Oh, well, it must be close because there's London dreadnoughts here. I've heard no one grows old in pertinence, I can remember says. Nor hungers, nor sorrows, it says another. Nor leaves, your signal adds. To prison for the immortal. At least it's the first time I've been here, so technically it will lower my terror. There's the dock, Captain. The signal declares the crew of relief to the thought of solid land. Yes, 
bloody, bloody party going on with weird laughter. On approach, Perdence looks like an opulent mansion caught partway through a genteel explosion. Each con constituent set of rooms accounted for, but separate and out of place. Each is connected in a rough circle by narrow, winding passages. The steep roofs are topped with shingled turrets and precarious towers. The elegantly disassembled county country house perches on top of a soot-stained windowless factory whose chimneys belch gouts of smoke and fire. Wow, that's quite the description. Enter the parlour. The docks face a set of polished oak doors carved with a series of masked figures dancing the quadrille. The windows in the parlour are shuttered, the light stained with pale yellows, blushing pinks and bruised violets. Lit with the illusion of dawn, or perhaps dusk, you see a room cluttered with stiff-backed armchairs and decorative chases set against savagely floral wallpaper in shades of burgundy, violet and brunswick green. A portrait of the Empress, unsmiling, hangs in an ornate gilt frame. A few visitors mill about, casting speculative glances at the expedited butler while they pretend to examine the decor. Okay, let's write a poor report. Pertinence is a jewel in the Empire's crown, where its favourite sons and daughters are pampered, protected and preserved. The visitors are puffed up with importance and embarrassingly eager to tell you how they obtained an invitation to the Half-Light Mask. Some, though, through patronage or long service, others through less celebritious means. All are desperate to spend a day in the company of the glittering inhabitants of Pertinence, the brightest stars in Albion's firmament. For here, the sons and daughters of Her Majesty's most important courtiers reside in eternal youth and sophistication. What do you sell here? Ooh, cask of never ending gemstones is a good one. Oh, Ministry of Proved Literature, that's really expensive, that's like what, a thousand? Five. I shall think about it. Okay, well, let's talk to the uh, exasperated butler. He appraises you with an officious disapproval that testifies to years of devoted training. Yes, and, he demands, he leafs through a leather covered, covered logbook to make clear that he is, in fact, terribly busy. Let's inquire about the nature of Pertinence. What is this place? He sighs. This is Pertinence, the home of the Half-Light Mask. Here Her Majesty has created a single perfect day wherein the finest examples of the Empire's youth may reside for all time. At the day's end, there is a grand ball. When it is over, the day is spun anew with fresh hours, and it all begins again. No one who resides here will age even a single day. Visitors are permitted, of course, relatives and a select few others, as long as they have an invitation, he says pointedly. ask about gaining an invitation to the Half-Life Mask. How does one get in, exactly? If one must ask how to obtain an invitation, one probably shouldn't have it. Typically, they are granted to the relatives of residents. However, the Ministry of Public Decency may award invitations to those who have served the Empire. We also receive an unusual number of visitors from the Royal Society. An invitation permits the bearer entry to a single instance of the mask from morning to evening. You thank him, but he clearly wishes to impress upon your you the grandeur of the matter. It is a great honour to be invited here, and an even greater one to be rewarded with a residence. The Empress is most generous with her favoured servants. He gives you a sharp look and adds, And we are all her servants, are we not? Ooh, ask about the debutants. Who is permitted to reside here? Why, they are the sons and daughters of Her Majesty's most valued, most trusted, counsellors and confidants. The residents want for nothing, they need fear nothing, they will not grow old, or no care or worry. They will be preserved forever in the flower of their youth and innocence. These are the gifts that Her Renewed Majesty has to grant. Can they leave? Why on earth would they want to do that? To do so would seem remarkably ungrateful. So they're all prisoners of all of her confidants and 
you know, people she works with, basically, so she can use them as threats. That's nice. Um, bid him goodbye. Goodbye, he says in the tones of one who has been relieved of a terrible burden. Hand over your invitation to the exasperated butler and join the half-flight mask. The portrait of the Empress swings open and a succession of brightly dressed debutantes, sour-faced chaperones and prim servants stumbles into the parlour. They barely have a moment to rest their feet and take a sip of tea before a panel of wallpaper slides open, the dark moor of a sharply curving passage just visible in the dawn light. The exasperated butler snatches the invitation from your hands. Remember, your invitation only lasts one day. It is a warning, but sounds a little wistful. He propels you forward to join the court in its procession. You emerge a little tender into the morning. The morning room is a greater version of the parlour, presided over by the orate duchess and her pink and purple silks. Dowagers of varying stateliness and aplomb take tea and converse in low tones. Other deputants reply to correspondents, writing notes in elegant script and affixing them with sealing wax. Meanwhile, chaperones give orders to the servants to see pertinent household accounts. The light is a flushed yellow, autumnly ripe. Ah, here we go, find a way below stairs with the incognito princess. Dearest mother, show me the plans, says the princess. The engineer should be back here. Engineering. I do so wish to observe them, let's rush! She gestures at a seemingly solid wall and urges you to follow. Okay, sure, why not? <laughs> the loom chambers below stares thunder and smoke. There are rows upon rows of hour looms, each tended by weavers with their hair pinned tightly back. The heat of the cooking combines with the shudder of machinery in the pandemonium. Watching over it all are the theoretical engineers Access to them, barred. Engineers only, states the sign in an angry font. I mean, there's a few options here. We can either get the driver. The driver is an engineer. They could get you in. Get the eccentric. The eccentric is a ferociously competent engineer. Their experience will assist you here. Or we could pose as an engineer. It's easy to get in if you're an engineer. Which you're not. But they don't know that. Ah, oh, part of me wants to bluff it. But no, let's get Cat Lady. Get the eccentric. With an introduction from a peer, it's easy to arrange a meeting with the engineers who keep pertinence trapped in a single perfect day. The incognito princess is enchanted by the turning machinery, and the engineers are as enchanted with her. They form a hive of activity around her, competing to answer her questions. She seems unsatisfied and presses harder. Change is the one constant though, she says. How do you truly prevent it? What, by what methods does change try to escape your bondage? You realise you're still there and, she, and dismisses you, saying she can find her own way back. Really? <sighs> the loom chambers below stairs thunder and smoke. Yeah, we've read this. Watching over the theoretical engineers. Return to the mask. The stairs back up to the morning room are tight and steep. Okay, so we have a few options here. We can charm the servants rushing here and there. They are a bluff of efficiency and sobriety and Miss Purden's opulence. So we can try and gain favour with the servants. We can char charm the ch charm the chaperones. Wow, that's a hard one. They cluster around the deputants, watching over them with habitually pinched expressions. Try to win favour with both servants and deputants. Or we can charm the deputants, a gleaming group of young men, women, and others, each more elegantly dressed than the one before. So, oh, chaperones or debutantes? I think we're going to go with the debutantes. The debutantes are eager for novelty after repeating the same day over and over again. As a visitor, you are highly prized. You answer their small queries about the outside world as best as you can. In their turn, they laugh at your jests and marvel at everything from your shoes to your stories of travel. There is a hunger to them. Despite their ample cheeks and glutted finery, youth sits lightly on their skin. Age presses its claws out from underneath. Exactly, just because you look young doesn't mean your brain isn't getting older. As in, the way you perceive the world. The morning room is a grander version of the parlour. Yes, 
Move onwards. One of the Dowager Duchesses rings a bell. Conversation halts with practiced suddenness. The morning is over. Everyone arrays themselves in a procession according to their station. The Dowager Duchess at the front, debutantes just behind, then chaperones and visitors, and the servants bringing up the rear. There is much jostling for position within each group, according to rules that you cannot begin to fathom. You enter the narrow and twisting passage, stumbling in the enveloping darkness as the debutantes giggle and shout, with each step and shrieks of hours being spun backwards resonate through your body, leaving you shaking and worn. You emerge, blinking, into the dazzle of afternoon. Here, the curtains are pulled back with tasseled ropes, allowing the clockwork sun to spill its stark gold into the dining room. The long table is set with rows of gleaming china, dinner plates patterned with delicate florals. Silver cutlery, polished to a high shine, gleams atop a pristine tablecloth. Servants pour endless glasses of watered wine, or carry in the next in a stream of elaborate dishes. Let's go back with the debutantes again, because we may as well put all of our eggs into one basket. A florid youth chatters brightly to your right. They laugh a little too sharp. You exchange wicked whispered observations of the nearby chaperones and servants. Your companion has a razored tongue and appreciates your keen observations of others' flaws. Move onwards, the Dowager Duchess gives a small nod and the entire company rises as one. A passage opens behind the china cabinet and the procession forms once more. You take a breath and step into the close, stifling darkness trying not to fall behind as the passage contorts and coils. With each step, the shrieks of hours being spun backwards resonates through your body, leaving you shaking and worn. You spot a figure, masked in a featureless black, their face covered by a smooth oval of polished obsidian. Who are they? It is an enormous relief to spill out into the evening at the grand ballroom. Everyone finds their place without a murmur, and courtly life is resumed. Almost as though the terrors you just experienced never existed. Hanging from the grand ballroom ceiling is a vast Ormolu gasolier, its spidery arms decked with cut crystal drops. It casts soft yellow brightness onto the masked dancers below as they whirl across the polished, paresque floor. Music blends with the hum of genteel conversation and the stiff swish of starched crinolines. The half-light mask is in full swing. There is barely room to stand, much less move. In we go again with the uh, debutantes. They wear fantastical animal masks of bright silks, dyed fur, and feathers affixed with jeweled pins. Sounds amazing. You dance with a debutante, taking their gloved hand in your own. You compliment their gloves as you move around the dance floor, and they are immediately pleased. Lemon yellow is a, the current fashion, of course. I took scissors to every other pair I could find in the laundry, so mine are the only ones currently <laughs> our fate. You conceal any shock at the confession and complete your... Ah, souverne in good order. It's French. Your hand reveals a silken squeeze as you part, as you part. Okay, move onwards, the music stops. Somewhere below a mechanical rumble can be heard as the hour looms begin spinning. Pertinence, one perfect perpetual day, all over again. One of the blacked out ballroom windows opens to reveal the passage back to the parlour at dusk, perhaps dawn. The keening of the hours as they are spun backwards makes your leg weak and your heart pound. You feel unaccountably wearied. You spot a figure masked in a featureless black, their face covered by a smooth oval of polished obsidian. Who are they? You enter the parlour through the portrait of the Empress and limp away, sore-footed from dancing and stumbling through the dark. Behind you, the members of the Court of Perdance chatter and take tea, and make ready to begin their day anew. But tonight, and every night thereafter, is the Half-Light Mask. Ooh. 
The procession emerges from the dark passageway into the dusky or perhaps dawny light of the parlour. Somewhere below, the pertinent hour looms labour to reweave its perfect day. Soon, the sleepless debutante will begin its morning anew. But first, someone approaches. A debutant lifts his glass to you. Hip hip hooray! The debutant toasts you with, a, with glasses of sherry, pilfered from the mask. The chaperones are scandalised. The debutantes shower you with effusive compliments and beg you to return. The consensus is that while Pertinent's eternal day is of course perfect, you still managed to improve upon it. Your hand is shaken, your cheek kissed, you receive a number of smoky glances from behind gleaming masks. You leave the mask rich in gossip, lulled by its luxury, and with a bright memory to comfort you in the dark. Wow, but briefly without terror. That was wonderful. Now, is she back? Uh, ask Her Highness about the rumours. The crew whisper of all the engineers in Perdence just disappearing, leaving naught behind but sporadic ghostly screams in the machinery. True. Did she do? God damn it. Two dozen starlings buzz around the princess's quarters. It takes some time to make yourself heard. It's not true, says the princess, gesturing at a short woman with tall hair and spectacles. My friend was an engineer. She hasn't disappeared. She's right here. The analytical suitor sits, staring accordingly, adoringly at the princess. However, I'm glad you are here. I understand that a new... Poetical movement inspired by the more melancholic strands of the Celestial School is meeting in Warbly Juxta Mare. I wish to better study this notion. Sadness. It is quite beyond me. She smiles. You're outside. The incognito seeks something blue in Warbly Juxta Mare. Well, this seems like a perfect place for me to end this episode. In the next episode, we will be going to Warby Juxta Mare to continue this bizarre trip around Albion with the Incognito Princess. But thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.